As glamping continues to blow up and more people are getting interested, I've noticed that there are so many different ways to skin this cat and I think everyone is looking at it via only one lens. So in this video, I'm gonna give you eight ideas to make money from glamping and I promise you, you have not heard or thought of all of these different ideas. I'm not just gonna give you those eight ideas, I'm actually gonna break them down and tell you how difficult they are, how much of an ROI you can expect back, and also what's the cool factor on them. So here's the game we're gonna play. I'm willing to earn the like on this video. If you can get through this video and you have heard or thought of all of these different ideas to start a glamping business, don't give me a like. If you learn something new though, hit the thumbs up button. Let's get into it. The first idea to make money from glamping is starting a mobile glamping business. With a mobile glamping business, you're kind of like a pop-up shop. So you own all of the equipment and you allow people to rent out your experience and you deliver it to them. With a mobile glamping business, you're probably gonna have a structure that is a tent or something very simple that you'd be able to pop up and pop down. But don't think that just because it's a tent it isn't beautiful and gorgeous. First off, what you're gonna need is a tent, something that is high quality, beautiful, easy to set up and take down. You're also gonna need a large car, a rental van, something along those lines that's gonna allow you to bring everything that you need from place to place. After that, you obviously would need a bed, something of that sort, you know, some furnishings inside. Uh, I would stick to a theme and kind of really push that. If you wanna take it up a notch, you could actually provide different packages. Think about for children's parties, there could be cowboy themes, space themes, princess themes. You could really set it up however you'd like. But what you're essentially doing is providing a unique experience at someone's doorstep. Now, this business is extremely logistical in terms of delivering all the items from place to place. But once you kind of figure everything out and get up and running, it actually is plug and play. Since you're delivering this awesome setup right to their doorstep, you actually would get a higher nightly rate than just setting it up in one location. Think about it, people are paying for convenience. With a mobile glamping business, you actually go to the customer and set up a mobile glamp site in their yard. The opportunities truly are endless. I will say with this type of business, your marketing game has to be on point. So here's the stats for a mobile glamping business. When it comes to difficulty of setting this business up, I'm gonna give it a hard seven. And the reason being is the logistics that it takes to set everything up and have your plan down packed where you can deliver it to them, set it up, break it down, and move on to the next customer. For ROI, I'm gonna give it an eight. And the reason being is you're able to charge a higher nightly rate because you are actually doing all of the legwork. The customer just has to give you the location, they step outside of their doorstep, and boom, their house or their yard has turned into a majestical, beautiful evening. For cool factor, I'm gonna give it a five. And the reason being is no one is a kid and thinks to themselves, I can't wait to start a mobile glamping business. You know, it's not as sexy, but it's extremely efficient. It's more of a true business, where a lot of things when it comes to glamping, people do via passion or you know they love the land that they purchase or they own a farm and then they set it up. This one is more of a business standpoint, straight in, straight out of the gate. I've started to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and conversations with people, link in the description if you wanna get into that. And what I've noticed during those conversations is everyone jumps straight into wanting to buy or purchase large acres of land. And sometimes I think that people don't understand how much work and effort that really goes into, which is why I love the idea of renting land. Now, if you rent land from a campground, you know camping is already 100% legal there. So it takes all of the zoning and the plotting and the planning of knowing what's allowed and what's legal, it takes all of that guesswork out of it. This one is extremely straightforward. Contact a couple of campgrounds in your local region find out their nightly rate. You can multiply that to find their monthly rate. Some campgrounds, and these are the ones that I prefer when going down this road, they already have a monthly rate. It's normally discounted a bit. Take their monthly rate, and that's essentially your costs. You know, you have to hit that number. That's your business's rent. Another plus out of renting land from a campground is there could be other amenities, whether it be showers, restrooms, water hookup, electric hookups, already on site. So it takes all of the planning that goes into having raw land and, and setting it up, it takes all of that out the window and you're able to get straight to work. So let's break down the numbers. When it comes to difficulty, I'm gonna give this one a three. 
And the reason being is it is extremely straightforward. There is a little bit of lead work that goes in researching campgrounds and setting up something on that campground site. But at the end of the day, it's plug and play. If you get a beautiful tent, link in the description to a couple of ones that I recommend. If you get a beautiful tent, you can set it up on the campground and be set up and ready to go within seven days, a week's time. For ROI, that gets a seven. And the reason being is you won't be able to demand a high nightly rate, okay? This isn't gonna be 300, $350. This is on a campground. But the cost that it takes for you to start up your business would be so low that you actually would be making a good chunk of change in terms of ROI. And for cool factor, this gets a one. <laughs> It's a campground, it's extremely straightforward. People have been on them before. This isn't gonna be any super duper extra razzle dazzle. But what it is gonna be is an easy and simple way for you to get your glamping business off the ground. So I have a couple more glamping business ideas to give you guys, but I wanna ask, are you getting value from this video? If so, please bless your boy with a thumbs up. Also, hit me with a subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 by the end of this year. I have more ideas that I know that you've never heard of in terms of starting a glamping business. I also have a bonus idea at the end of the video. So let's dive right back in. So this is what I call the all-in YOLO idea. I'm currently doing it right now. I own three acres of land in upstate New York. I built an A-frame on it and I get to really build this thing, all the land, all the amenities, exactly how I want it to be. It's really awesome, it's extremely fulfilling. It's also really, really, really hard work. And that's what I wanna tell everybody. If you go down this path, be prepared to fight, be very realistic about what you're doing, but also this one is the idea that has some of the highest ROIs. And the reason being is, you can go as far as you want to with this idea. There's almost nothing, there's almost no restrictions holding you back. So for this setup, let's hit the numbers. For difficulty, I'm gonna give this out of 10, a 13. This one is extremely difficult because there's so many different things to think about and factor. What you'll need to worry about changes per land. Do you have a roadway already there? Do you have a driveway put in? Do you need to set up a septic? Do you need to set up a well? There's so much to think about and it really only gets harder once you start poking around and really learning the ins and outs of the land that you purchased. For ROI, I'm gonna give it a nine. And the reason being is I would give it a higher score, a straight 10, but purchasing land, building something on it, all of that type of stuff, it's extremely costly. So that will eat into your profits. You may not be profitable for a few years in until you get really up and running. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a nine. That being said, this is where you can have a very high nightly rate because what you've built up and set up for them is extremely unique. They can't get it anywhere else. For cool factor, I'm gonna give it an 11 out of 10. This is the Pierre de Résistance of this glamping world, you know what I mean? Owning land, building it up, building it in the idea and watching it come to fruition. You know, it's all what you've thought of and what you've wanted for a while. It's extremely fulfilling and it's just an awesome one to have. For Cool Factor, it gets a hard 11. I don't think anything else on this list is gonna be up there when it comes to the Cool Factor. Buying a traditional home to set up your glam site is an idea that I love the play of because the risk is so low. Now with any real estate deal you do, there's obviously gonna be risk associated with it. But with this idea, what you do is buy a traditional home that has a large amount of acreage on it. So you're buying you know, one house, maybe a shed, something like that. But it just so happens to be on seven acres of land. That gives you a ton of space to set up a small glamp site and to do what you gotta do right there on your land. Now, why I say the risk factor on this one is a little bit lower is there's a ton of information out there on buying traditional real estate. If you really do your homework, this is the one that when you put down your money, you can feel the safest about because you should be able to do a ton of research. There's so much info out there that you can just buy a traditional regular real estate deal. You can either live at that house or you can rent that house out, make money from it. You can turn that house into a short-term rental, make a little bit more money than you would having a traditional tenant. And on top of that, you have the glamp site outside. So now this piece of land is bringing in a ton of money. This is Land Hacking 101. Again, there's a ton of research that you can do out there. There's a ton of info out there on this idea. The biggest con of this one that I can think of though is the fact that some of you will be living on that land. So it could be a pro, it could be a con, but you actually may be living extremely close to your guests. With this one, the more acres you get, the better. I would shoot for something that has seven, 10, even higher amount of acres on it. 
that's where you can set yourself up for success. For difficulty, I give this one a six. Yes, it's a traditional real estate deal. You can straight up get a mortgage to set it up. But that being said, we all know home ownership in America is getting harder and harder. If you get a traditional mortgage, you're actually using other people's money to fund your dreams and to get things going off the ground. You would really only need about 20% down and you can get up and running. On top of that, this is one of those ideas that you would have a dual revenue stream coming in because you instantly, on purchase, have the home already there. And then on top of that, you would set up the glamping site outside. So you could be making money from the home and the glamp site. And for cool factor, this one gets a four. Congratulations, you bought a home. That That's about, I mean, kudos. kudos. I mean, it, it ain't easy. It ain't, I haven't done it, so kudos. Renting land from an RV park is an awesome idea because it takes away all of the hoops and hurdles you would have to go through when it comes to zoning. Now with RV parks, they 100% are going to have water hookups, restrooms on site, maybe some barbecue pits, electricity. All of those things are gonna be there and ready to go for you. Well, what do you do? Hop on Facebook Marketplace, get yourself a sweet 1970s vintage camper, set it up, have it ready to rock and roll, and drop it off at the RV park. Now I know what some of you are saying. RV parks aren't the most aesthetically pleasing locations, but I would implore you to think again. Not all of them are the old school RV parks that you think of in your mind. There are modern day RV parks that actually have some sweet amenities that are shared amongst everyone who rents land on the RV park. On top of that, there's even some RV parks nowadays that explicitly say, yes, we take in tiny homes. If you have a sick tiny home, you can plot it on our land. With the issues of setting up electrical, water, zoning and all of those things completely out of the way for you, you can go straight into running your business, get up and running extremely quickly. So let's dig into the numbers. With an RV park for difficulty, I'm gonna give it a three. The reason being is it's super straightforward. Call up, reach out to your local RV parks, maybe ones that aren't so local, dig around and find one that has really cool amenities, straightforward pricing, and is just easy to work with. For ROI, I'm gonna give this one a six. What you put on the RV park isn't going to be cheap. Old school campers, yes, they're not extremely expensive, but they're also not budget discount type of things. Also, you may have to put some money towards restoring the camper that you have. Also, tiny homes aren't that cheap. Yes, they're cheaper than a home, but they're not really that cheap but it is able to get up and running quickly. The second you receive your camper, your RV, your tiny home, you're ready to go. But keep in mind, you will have to put some money aside in terms of renovating. Some of these old school campers, they're gonna need a bit of elbow grease and pure cash funneled into them to get them looking their best. So for ROI, it gets a six. Let's not forget that you also have to pay the campground every month. And for cool factor, you get about a one. And the reason being is it's an RV park. All right, what, what, it gets a two, it gets a three, it gets a five. No, it gets a one. It's an RV park. Let's move on. So this one is like traditional investing or being an angel investor. You want to get into the space. You may not have the time. You may not want to put forth the effort. But what you do have is the capital. So what you want to do is connect to somebody like myself or anybody out there that is really into this type of stuff and kind of funnel your cash flow through them and fund what they have going on and you just sit back and get that sweet, sweet cash coming back to you. Now it may sound hard to find someone to pair up with, but there actually is a lot more real estate investment groups all over America than you would think. You kind of really just have to put yourself out there. Hey, feel free to use the comment section to pair up with people. That being said, do not be extremely trustworthy, especially when it comes to your money double check the individual, verify everything he or she is saying, make sure that you feel comfortable with what you're doing. I always tell people if something doesn't click or connect to you fully and that person doesn't wanna take the time to really map it out and explain it to you, walk away. Only invest in things that you completely understand from top to bottom. For difficulty, this gets a three. You are funding the glamping business, but you're not actually putting in the legwork. So the three is there because you have to find the individual. At that point, you can kick back and become a little bit more of a silent partner. For ROI out of 10, this one gets three question marks. I don't know what idea you and this individual are gonna be setting up. It really could be something that'll blow up and make you millions, and it probably won't, you know? So you gotta really figure out, it's gonna be somewhere in between zero and a million bucks. You, you guys figure that out. So this is how you could actually have a glamping business without having a glamping business. 
you would create a product, whether it be physical or digital, and you can sell that to others. Now, I'm not talking about being a charlatan and popping up out of the blue and trying to sell people your ideas and your thoughts. Um, you know, if you don't really have that level of expertise, take a step back. You could create a tech product, something that makes it easier for hosts that own glamping sites to get their jobs done. You could create a physical product. You could create a sign that is really awesome, super unique, runs off of solar, has cool lights in it, and you know it could be at different glamp sites across America that tells people where to go, or maybe it's a sign telling them you know the name of the glamp site. You could create different off-grid systems or physical off-grid products that could be at different glamp sites and make building a glamp site easier. There's so many different ways to skin that cat, and it really is up to your imagination. So think to yourself, what product Products would you like to see made for glamp sites? As I go through this more and more, I'm constantly thinking about different ideas and different plays that could be had just because I'm noticing that there's a real lack in the market while well, I'm trying to get stuff done and it baffles me that there isn't already a product out there that would allow me to do it or make it easier for me. The sky really is the limit. It's up to your imagination. For difficulty out of 10, this one gets a one through 10. And the reason being is I'm not sure how difficult the product that you're thinking about making. If you're thinking about making a really cool coffee table book that has a bunch of different clamp sites, you know, that would maybe get like a five. If you're thinking about uh, making a simple carving that could go to different glamp sites, a, a wooden sign letting people know where the glamp site is, maybe that's a little bit easier. And if you're gonna make a tech product that you wanna build up into a unicorn, well, that's gonna be a bit of a longer play. For ROI, you guessed it, a one through 10. This one is really up there. I don't know how much you're putting towards it and I don't know how much you really could get back from it. For cool factor, yeah, buddy, one through 10. It's really up there, it's, it's really up to you. And for a bonus tip, you could set up glamping events or retreats or getaways for glamping enthusiasts and people that are really just groups that just wanna get out of town together. That is one idea I'm currently not doing, but I'd love to set up in the future where I would be able to have an event space on my glamp site. Other people have already set it up where they're even hosting weddings on their glamp sites. Once you have the space, really the sky's the limit in terms of different events that you could have on your location, on site. I really hope I didn't make these ideas sound like they're gonna be very easy and just simple to set up. Starting any business is very difficult. Starting such a cutting edge, and it's funny that I say cutting edge for something that isn't tech, but glamping is extremely new. If you don't believe me, check out this video. After building my awesome Den Outdoors cap and kit A-frame to set up my glamp site, I got rocked by something devastating that happened on my glamp site that actually didn't allow me to get up and running and making money for almost a hundred days.